everybody. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. It is Friday. All right, it is Friday. What is going on with these five-day school weeks? We gotta talk to somebody about doing three days. Hey, junior, seniors, congratulations. Uh, everyone in here today has met a certain requirement as part of Renaissance, so congratulations. I think it's 2.5 GPA, no discipline referrals, no tardies to class, plenty of donations to the Mr. Gresco Summer Fund, so thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we have a great program set up for you today, but in order for to have a great program, we need you to guys and girls to pay attention. All right? We are lucky enough to have today Mr. Mark Zuccaria. He's a nationally known mentalist, hypnotist, and lecturer. He performs at colleges, corporations, theaters, and private events all over our country. Mark has performed for people such as legendary baseball great Bobby Thompson, and was even brought up to give a command performance for the New York State Senate. New Jersey Monthly Magazine calls him a total boggleman. Today's performance of Just Imagine asks you what it would be like if a man could really read your mind or influence you without your knowing. Would any secret be safe? Just imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mark Zuccaria. Good morning, Lawrence High School. Oh, this is good. Yeah, they told me they were going to get a lot of smiling faces this morning. This is perfect. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Sicari. I've had the privilege of performing all over the country. I get to do this show that you see right now is the same show that I do at theaters and corporations where they pay a lot of money to come and see a show like this. You guys have earned the right to come in here and see this, and it's my privilege. I would like to propose a game. And we've been playing games ever since children, right? Ever since being children. Uh, and the fun about a game is not necessarily the prize that we win so much as the, the victory lap, the thrill of calling ourselves a winner. Let me, I will have the opportunity to bring a couple of volunteers up. Let me start by getting, um, well, let's see over here, right here on the end. What's your first name? Sarah. Sarah, with or without an H at the end? With the H at the end, that's the way my, uh, my mom does not spell it that way. I'm sorry, get out. No, Sarah, stay. Can we give Sarah a round of applause? Come up here as quick as you can, Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me over here. Sarah has no idea what we're going to be doing over here. And that's part of what we're going to be doing. You'll find at the end of the show, you can't help but to ask the question. You're going to go up to friends and say, hey, did Mark... Uh, ask you to help him out? Did, did you set anything up in advance? This is just too small an audience for me to get away with something like that. So I assure you, I don't have any what we call plants in the audience. There are no stooges. There's nobody who is here to help do me a favor, right? We haven't met before. Sarah, we're going to play a little game. This is a game that um, what my dad used to play many years ago. Do you guys remember half dollars? You may not even remember half dollars. Uh, it was, uh, it's twice the value and twice the size of a quarter. This is the closest coin I could even find. It's a Canadian coin. Would you hold on to that, please? And this is a little guessing game he used to do with the nieces and the nephews. My father was probably the favorite uncle. So Sarah, what you're going to do is put your hand behind your back, both hands, and I want you to hold the coin that you have between the, the thumbs and fingers of both hands. In a moment, you're going to bring both hands out. Are you a righty or a lefty? A righty. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring both hands out. They should both look exactly the same. The only rule is that the coin does have to be in one of the two hands. And we're going to attempt to guess which hand it's in. Now, you're going to notice the same things that I do. See if you guess as accurately as I. Sarah, you're going to make a decision. Bring both hands out now. Separate them just a little bit, because I want them to see over here. Sarah, we're going to indicate this hand as the pink hand, and this hand as the blue hand. You're going to not be able to help yourself. You're going to give something away, just in your mind. Think pink or blue. OK, did you see where her eyes went right now? It went right over to, to the pink hand. Now, here's the thing. What was the question I asked her when she came up? I said, are you a righty or a lefty? If I were to bring a, a gentleman up here, and if you're a righty, what most men will do is they know, okay, this is a guessing game. Mark is going to anticipate me keeping it in my right hand. I'm going to throw it in my left hand. Sarah seems much more independent. 
Sarah, Sa right, and to those of you who know her, you can tell, right? If Sarah's a righty, so it's very likely she led with her dominant hand. It's very likely that the coin is, in fact, in the pink hand. Sarah, would you show them that the blue hand is empty? Yeah. So it's in the pink hand over here. Show them, yeah? That's one. Good. Go back behind. Now Sarah's thinking, okay, he got me. Sarah's probably thinking, okay, if he's going to catch me, he's going to have to chase me. She's thinking maybe I should toss it over to the other hand. Of course, now that I said that, it does make it much harder for her to make that choice. Sarah, both hands out! But the, the, those came out well, like with a vengeance, right? Make sure they can see over here as well. Okay, and so, and so the only rule it is, is it has to be one of the hands. So here's what Sarah's thinking. He's expecting me to toss it over to the other hand. If, if, if the coin is in this hand, I want you to think uh, teddy bear. If the coin is in that hand, I want you to think pony. Teddy bear, pony. <laughs> You're going to do something to give it away. That's not it. Okay, so do you notice what she's doing? She's trying steadfastly not to turn her head back towards me, even though I'm talking to her directly which means she doesn't want me to give attention to this side over here. I think it's in the teddy bear hand. Would you show them that the pony hand is empty? Yeah, show them it's in the teddy bear hand. Boom, there's two. Hand goes back behind. Okay, so she's had it first in the pink hand. She kept it in the teddy bear hand. Now she's thinking, I gotta try it at least once in the other hand. Sarah, last chance, as long as it's in one of the two hands, bring the hands out. And I just want to make sure, okay? I want you guys to be able to see what I see. It would be easy to assume that given that she kept it in the far hand twice, that she would toss it over. Uh, if the coin is in this hand, we're going to say uh, Hawaii. If the coin is in that hand, we're going to say Bermuda. Hawaii, Bermuda. If you were Sarah, what would you do? Would you have tossed it over to the other hand? You think, you think Hawaii. I think Sarah is so independent and so willing to challenge that she would dare to do what most people wouldn't. She would dare to keep it in the same hand all three times. If I'm right, can you please show them the Bermuda hand is empty, please? Yeah, show them that it's in the Hawaii hand. That's three. Now, Sarah. They're going to ask you, right, I didn't tell you ahead of time what hand to put it in. Is that correct? Yes. Did you have any idea which hand you were going to put it in before you even came up here? No. You had no idea that you were going to start in, we said, the pink hand. You were going to leave it in the teddy bear hand. And instead of tossing it over, you were going to still leave it in the Hawaii hand. Pink, teddy bear, and Hawaii. You had no idea that that was the, the choices you were going to make? So if you didn't know, and they didn't know, certainly I couldn't know. I have a present for you. It's over here. Stand right over here. Reach inside the bag. That's a pink teddy bear, but there's a, a sign hanging around its neck. Would you tell everybody what it says on the back? I love Hawaii too. Give Sarah a round of applause. That's for you. What I do relies on magic, psychology, showmanship, and an understanding of nonverbal communication. These are skills that we all know, but we don't necessarily know that we can refine. Now, in the early part of the last century, there was a miracle worker, a phenom, named Theo Anneman. Anneman was more than a mind reader. His abilities defied scientific explanation. And when he got tired of being examined so much, he decided to take what he understood and put it into a handwritten manuscript he intended to publish under the pseudonym of Shaman. Well, that manuscript was almost lost in a fire. And as a result, Anneman was driven to near madness. Anneman died at the age of only 34. Well, because of this, the manuscript fell into the hands of creditors and eventually bidders on his estate. And that manuscript, it was reported, sold at auction five years ago out east on Long Island to an anonymous bidder. But just imagine if you could get your hands on this manuscript and you could read this and learn this. What if somebody could read your mind or influence you without your knowing? Would any secret be safe? 
Just imagine. Now that leads me in part to the title of the program that you're seeing. I'm going to be accessing your imagination throughout the program. This show is very much about you and your ability to understand and use your imagination. You will also see, if you look carefully, I have the rather cliche magic wand over here on the stage. The magic wand is for the end of the show. When I get to the point where I bring somebody up to help me with the magic wand after that, that's it. There's nothing else. So designate one person in each row to make sure I don't go near this during the show. So Adam talks about the fact that if you really want to seem like you're reading somebody's mind, and I'm telling you, I don't pretend to have any special powers. I have the same powers as you, the powers of observation and the powers of giving attention to things that other people might not give attention to. Adamant says it becomes twice as challenging, more than twice as challenging if you get two people involved and they think about two different things that may have an emotional attachment. That's what's going to be critical. I'm going to need two helpers. Let me get, um, uh, yeah, you, sir, do me a favor. What's your first name? Darshall. Say it again. Darshall, Darshall, get up here as quickly as you can. <laughs> and let me get a young lady, uh, perhaps on the end. Would you be willing to come up? The young lady, it says arrow across, no, perhaps next to you. Oh, you guys are afraid I intimidate you. The hand up over there, yeah, come on up. We'll bring you on up. Darshall, thank you so much for coming up. I appreciate that. And quick as you can, we'll bring you right up over here. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? What's your first name? Eliza. Eliza. So we have Eliza and Darshall. Uh, and I'm going to access, I'm going to need your help in a second, sir. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Yeah, don't worry. You can sit right there. Darshall, I want you to think of, um, of somebody who's important to you. Just the first name of somebody, and I don't want you to think of this person by a title like mom or uncle. I want you to think of the name of somebody to whom you have an emotional attachment. Uh, and it should be somebody who is not here, because for instance, I don't want him to kind of look over and then it gives it away to me, right? So it should be somebody who's important in your life, somebody who you can visualize, hair length, eye color, does that make sense? but somebody who's not here, do you have somebody in mind? You're gonna print that person's first name only, right here, big and bold, so somebody else will be able to read it. But you're not gonna show me, you'll stand maybe another half step over. When you are done, no, <laughs> no that was a gravity check, that, was, that worked? Gravity check, okay, good. Darsha, when you're done, you will see that you can fold this in half and fold it in half again, that's gonna be important. I pre-folded it for a reason, print the first name only, Right there. It, was it Liza? Eliza. Eliza, you're going to think of a dream vacation spot. Imagine you graduate. Imagine you're allowed to go anywhere in the world on vacation. May I give you the pencil? Now, this can be a place that you've been to that you would like to revisit. It can be a place you have never been to that you heard would be wonderful. It doesn't even need to be real. It could be like Hogwarts or Oz. I don't care. What matters is that I don't want them to shout out to you. The choice should be yours. You're going to write it big and neat right over here, but you're not going to show me. Write it so someone else will be able to read it. When you are done, you will fold it. It's pre-folded, first in half, and then over again. That is for you. So you're writing a name. You're writing a place, some place. What's your first name, sir, in the front row? What's your first name? Trey. Trey? What's that? Yeah, any place that you want, big and neat, so someone else will be able to read it. Good, so what, what's happening is she's demand, making a demand of herself to make an emotional connection. Trey, right over here if you don't mind. Yeah. Trey, I'm gonna give you this envelope. That'll make more sense in a minute. That, we're gonna access your anger management. Is that okay? Good, do I get the right guy for that? Okay, Trey, you're gonna be important. You can just hang out there and look handsome. Perfect. Okay, you've written a name. You've written a place. Uh, you can put the pencils in your pockets and you fold it into quarters. Darsha, would you hand your paper to Eliza? I want you to have both of them. Yep. Face our audience, I want you to put both of those together in your hand, in the same hand. Turn them over, turn them over again. Put them behind your back. Start mixing them. Mix, 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 back and forth, back and forth. And Eliza, I'm going to look at you as you do this. Here's why. As you mix them, it's really important that you, you lose track of which one is which because I don't want you to make an emotional choice right now. I want you to make a logical choice, meaning uh, a choice that you did not know you were going to make. All you're going to do is follow directions. Mix, 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 back and forth, back and forth. Whichever one you want to hold on to, we're going to call that the target. 
the one you want to get rid of, the one that we're going to destroy, is the one that you hand me. And understand that the minute you hand it to me, it is going to be disqualified. The choice is yours. Which one would you like to get rid of? Yes? Eliza, before we do this, I'm going to give you the option to switch papers with me before we do And here's why. Tonight, when you go home and you lie down and you put your head on your pillow, you're going to say, man, I, I love Lawrence High School. I love the Renaissance celebration. I love being part of this. I love Mark's show. And he gave me a chance to swap papers. And I didn't. It's going to be too late then. It's now or it's never. Do you want to swap? Five seconds. Three seconds. One second. She says no. She's asking if she gets a free vacation. Uh, yeah, but not from me. Okay. So here's what's happening. Uh, Trey, you said, right? You're, you're tearing that up. Yeah, once or twice. The fact is that we're shredding it. We're getting rid of that. That one's out of play. You have one. You have no idea. You made a blind. It's actually a blind, a, a double blind, right? Because we don't know either. We know only that you have either the name or the place. That's all torn up. Thank you very much. But you don't have any idea which one that you have. You have thought of a name. You have thought of a place. Adaman talks about the way to get people's attention is to ask them questions when they're off guard or to ask them questions in what we call an elevator conversation. Have you ever heard that phrase, an elevator conversation? When you have a short, finite period of time and you want to know the most about a person, you ask them questions that either require a, a, a deep amount of thought, not a yes, no question, or kind of a, a question that's going to throw them off the beam. But what you're listening for is not just the answer. You're listening for the pause between the question and the answer, their volume, their tone, their pitch, their body language. All of these are things that when you combine them together, you might be able to intuit. You're thinking of a person who's important to you. You're thinking of a place. Uh, you're thinking of a person you can visualize. You, either, you, either you've been here or you have a very good imagination. I think you're thinking of a place that you have not been to, but that you have a very good imagination about, a fantasy place. I like that. You, sir, are thinking of a man or a woman. <laughs> Don't rush me. Eliza, I'm gonna, you see the arms crossed? I'm going with Eliza. Here's what we're going to do. She's like, I'm under scrutiny. I'm going to ask her some questions. I'm going to write her answers here. And tell me if you can thread the needle with me. Question number one. What is the most fun thing you ever did as a, as a child? If you, weren't you with you? So think about it for a second. What's the most fun thing you've ever done, right? And we rarely get this question asked because it demands an emotional judgment. As a child or now? As a child. Like the beach? Uh, you're going with the beach? Yeah. Okay, so beach. She likes the beach. She likes warm weather. Okay. That's okay. I'm going to go real slow because I'm looking for reactions from you. Okay, question number two. What is the best advice you ever got from an adult while growing up? Don't overthink about the decisions you make. Don't overthink. Okay, so what I will do is I will write the word overthink and a circle with a line through it. So here's what I've identified about you. First of all, you are more of a people person. You like to, you're, you're comfortable in crowds. You have a nice close group of friends that you are, are um, tight with. Uh, you, do like, uh, you do like the beach. I think that's important to you. And you are, except when you're up on stage, probably more outgoing with your friends. Is it fair to say that you have a pretty good sense of humor? So I'm gonna get a pad from over here. Imagine if you can. Are your beach friends here today? People you like to go to the beach with? Yeah? Yeah? It's... So here's the challenge. I, you, were, you were caught between two places in your mind, and you didn't know which one to pick, and you finally settled on one. And I think, I, I hope, if I got my, 
I'm feeling a little lucky about this. You have the... Uh, Let's see what you wrote. <laughs> Bali. Okay, you wrote Bali. Is there a particular reason why you picked Bali? You like the beach. You're going to be a little bit tougher, sir. Stand right over here. Um, you're not the you're not the oldest child, are you? Nope. No, you have you have an old, at least one older brother or sister. Uh, I want you to name one food that you would never put in your mouth. That's hard. I'm a foodie. Um, tomatoes. Tomatoes. Okay. If you could rub the lamp and the genie came out and you could literally graduate from college and go into any job of your choice, what would it be? Investment banking. Did you notice that the food choice, an emotional decision game, a little bit harder, but he had this logical answer right away. You're thinking of a male. You are thinking of uh, a friend of yours, You're somebody who you think of like family, but this is not a family member. Uh, think of just the first letter of the name, just the first letter of the name, nothing else. You are thinking, uh, it's, it's an S or a Z. I'm going to go with an S. Okay, think of, um, think of the last letter, because I'm, what I'm doing is I'm breaking it into components. Think, if you were to spell this out, think of just the last letter. That was pretty clear. You did it in an A, and you did it in a capital A. Okay, so you are thinking of... And I, I work off of different clues, so I may get the pronunciation wrong, but I think I, and if I have this right, you'll own it right because he tore it up. You'll tell me if I have this right. Are you thinking of the name Shay? Yeah, but that's female and she's my family member. Female Shay? Okay, so I, I got, it, I got the, the gender wrong, but I got the name right. It's Shay? Yeah. Good. Round of applause for him. Excellent. You can head over there. You can sit down, sir. Thank you very much. So the question that I get asked most frequently, obviously, is how do you do that? And the next question that I get asked is, is that something that I could learn? Well, yes, but I'm going to need, if, if I'm going to get somebody to volunteer to come up, and I, know to, I, I understand that I'm a stranger to you, and I understand that this seems a little odd, and I understand that in trying to reach out to some people, you may be a little reluctant. Let me tell you how I'm going to get my next spectator, because it's going to demand a commitment from you. Listen first, and then you can make the decision if this is the commitment that you'd like to make. Usually the people who are waving their hands the most, those are the people that go, yeah, you're gonna be a pain in the ass, sit down, no. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Put your hands down because you may rethink the decision. You're going to make a, a, a commitment up here in a minute. The commitment is going to demand that you be uh, what we call suggestible. It doesn't mean that you're going to be gullible. That's different. Gullibility means that you're not bright enough to make your own decisions. Suggestibility means that you are bright enough to use your imagination to allow things that might not seem possible to be possible. If you are a female who is on some form of a team, Please stand. <laughs> Remain standing if you are, uh, if, if there is a, 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 a brother or sister older than you in the family. If you are not the oldest one, remain standing. If you are the oldest, sit down. If you are the oldest, sit down. I'm doing only females right now. Only females. Okay. Of those of you who are still standing, here's the, the, the demand that I'm going to make of you. I need you to be the type of person who is willing 
to suspend disbelief. That means that you're not going to come up with this preconceived notion, oh, that's not possible. You have to be willing to embrace the idea that what sounds impossible, if you access your imagination, can in fact be possible. If you are not comfortable coming up on stage, please sit down now. Okay. To the few of you who are remaining standing, this is going to be just for you. This is not going to impact those of you who are seated. This is only for the few of you who are still remaining. You are not the oldest in your, in your family. You're a member of some form of a team. You are willing to come up and you understand that I'm going to ask you to be suggestible, compliant, willing. Please hold your hand in front of your face just like this and I want you to look at the palm of your hand. Now, despite where I am on the stage, despite where I walk, despite the people around you, you have to demonstrate that you can be compliant, that you can focus only on the lines in your hand. Don't allow the sounds or the, the, the uh, distractions of your neighbors to keep you from looking at your hand. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. As you exhale all the way out and you look at the lines on your hand, you're going to find that your eyes start to get a little fatigued. Exhale all the way out. Your legs will always support you. I really want you to lock your legs in place. Your legs should be about shoulder width apart. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale out through the mouth. Empty the lungs. This time when you take a deep breath in, you're going to hold your breath for one full second. Deep breath in. Hold your breath one second. Exhale all the way out. Deep breath in. Look right at the lines in your hand. Do not let go. Okay, I'm going to count back from five. When I get from five down to one, you're going to find that your hand is going to start to close. You will have no explanation for this other than the fact that you are accepting this suggestion as your reality. And once your hand is closed, you will not be able to open it. Five, your hand is starting to close. Four, take a deep breath in. Three, exhale all the way out. Two, your hand is just about closed. And one, your hand should be closed right in front of you now. Lock it down, look right at your hand. Take a deep breath in. Look only at your hand, exhale all the way out. That hand is getting tighter and tighter and tighter still. If your hand is not closed, sit down. This is not going to work for you. To those of us whose hands are closed, look right at your hand. That's the only thing you're looking at. Good, stare at it. Imagine that it is nice and tight. I'm going to snap my fingers and count to three, and that hand will be twice as tight. One, two, and three. Even if you tried to open it now, you couldn't. The harder you try, the more impossible it is to open that hand. Take a look at that hand. Every other sound in this room is giving you permission to focus only on the sound of my voice and the look of your hand. That hand is no longer flesh and bone. That hand looks like it's made out of marble, that it's only carved to look like a hand. That hand cannot be opened. The harder you try, the more impossible it will be. It's getting tighter, tighter, and tighter still. You can try and open it. It will not open. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. It is getting tighter still. Keep going. Keep going. I want you to keep, I want you to walk to the aisle over here. Join me over here. That hand is tight. That hand is tight. Okay, good. Yeah, that hand is getting tighter still. Give, give her three way to come through over here. Hold that hand up. Look right at it. It's tighter still, tighter still. Extend the arm all the way. Now, when I count to three and snap my fingers, this arm is going to be like a steel bar. One, two, and three. This arm cannot bend. The harder you try to bend it, the more impossible it will be. Try and bend it, and you can't. Right? Look at this. Absolutely steel. Right? Good. One, two, three. Close your eyes. Just relax. Sleep. Relax for a second. Just drift down and deep in your head. The deeper you go, the better this feels. And the better this feels, the deeper this goes. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. You're absolutely safe. Your legs will always support you. You are not hypnotized. What you are is in a state of suggestibility. I'm going to bring you up on the count of three. When your eyes open and your chin comes up, you're going to find a sense of comfort that has completely blanketed you, that you feel absolutely in control and willing to accept every suggestion. Please nod if you understand me. One, two, and three. Eyes open, deep breath in. What's your first name? Jordan. Jordan, how do you feel? Pretty good? Tired. Tired, yeah. Do you feel willing to try this with me? Yeah. Jordan, please join me up on stage here. Give her a round of applause. We're going to go up here.
Jordan, please look at a spot against the back wall, nothing else. I don't want you to look at the friends. I want you to look either at an exit sign or one of the windows in the back. In other words, a fixed point, because as I back out of your peripheral vision, you will find that as you take a long, slow, deep breath in and then exhale all the way out, you're going to find that your eyes start to get uh, fatigued. Sir, over here, would you mind taking these from me over here? What's your first name? Alessandro. Alessandro? Would you hold on to both of these? Take a look at those examiners while you're sitting over there. Jordan, take a long, slow, deep breath in. Jordan, this is going to be absolutely safe, but what you have demonstrated a willingness to do is to pay attention to focus. You are not hypnotized, but what you are doing is accepting the suggestions as they become your reality. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale all the way out. The first thing that you notice is your shoulders are starting to loosen up, right? Your mouth might be a little dry, but you're getting relaxed and released. Your legs will always support you. You will never fall over. Take a long, slow, deep breath in and close your eyes. Good, and you notice that your chin wanted to start to drift down. You can let your chin drift down towards your chest and just take a long, slow, deep breath in. You are safe. Every other sound is going to give you permission to allow this to happen. I'm going to teach Jordan something, and I'm going to do it in front of you so you understand the method that we are going to try right now. What we are going to try is a, is, it's a, a branch of a philosophy of Taoism. Taoism talks about the third eye. May I touch you on the forehead? Just like this, the third eye, we've seen images of this in literature, and what this means is that we are uh, acting like a conduit. We are giving ourselves permission both to access somebody else's thoughts and to have them access ours. What keeps people from succeeding at this is their own innate logical defense that this is not possible. And I'm giving her the suggestion that it is possible. I'm asking her to use her memory and her imagination. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale all the way out. Go twice as deep into this state. Your legs will always support you. Good. Deeper and deeper. And what she is going to do is give herself permission to access somebody else's thoughts. This will not last after she leaves the stage because she's going to come out of this. She will feel like she's had a, a weekend rest at a, at, a, at a fine resort when we are done here. But she will have no real concept of how this works. What will happen is, um, Jordan, in a moment, but not yet, in a, moment, in a moment to make sure that you don't have any access to what people may be saying or shouting out, you're going to keep your eyes closed, you're going to put your fingers in your ears, and that way, for as much as we can, we're shouting out external stimuli. Uh, Alexandro, is the, did I pronounce it correctly? No, co please correct me, I want to get it right. So, I, I have two different books there, correct? They're both, uh, you may be familiar with either, both, or none of them, right? Which one do you want to give away to, to your buddy over there? Do you want to get, I have uh, The First Deadly Sin and I have Moby Dick. Which one do you want to give away to him? Give Moby Dick to him. Excellent. You can give me this book over here and you're going to take a seat. Thank you very much. What's your first name, sir? Henry. Henry? Did I say it correctly? Henry, stand up on your spot over here. Henry, in a moment I'm going to bring you up here. And here's what I'm going to ask of you, Henry. Uh, I want you in a, uh, I want Henry to think of something, but here's what Anneman teaches. Anneman teaches that it becomes easier to access thoughts or memories that people have an emotional attachment to. We're now going to try a thought or an emotion or an idea that you had no idea you were going to think of. In other words, it makes it harder because you may have no emotional attachment to this. We're going to pick a page at random and I'm going to beg the indulgence of the guys around you not to look at what he sees because it would just be too easy for you to think that somehow they are signaling. So Henry, we're counting on you. We're going to get a page at random. Uh, Henry, I'm going to run through here. You just say stop whenever you want. Over here. Stop. Uh, is this good or do you want me to keep going? Okay. Page 212. Page two, 212. Turn to page 212 in your book. Uh, are there words on that page? Okay, I want you to look at the words that are at, at the top of the page, the first line. Why? Those are the easiest words on any page to see, right? Because there's a white border, there's a white column. Take a look at the first three or four words on that line. Is there something in that line that you would be able to create an image of in your mind? Yeah. Yes. Will you remember it if you close the novel? Yeah. Close the book? Come up here and join me. The more you applaud for Henry, the deeper Jordan is going to go into the state. Just release and relax. You're doing wonderful. Right over here, right over here. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to send you right over here, sir. Are you a righty? You're going to hold the pen in your right hand. 
hold the pad in your left hand so they cannot see. What you're going to do, listen to me very carefully, is you're going to draw some image even you didn't know you were going to think about. You didn't come in here today with this idea. This is not accessing something that he even knew he was going to think. We grade on a curve. So here's what I'm asking you. The image that you draw, draw it as big as you can. It only needs to have enough detail for them to recognize what it is. You're not expected to be an artist. That's fine. So to avoid any confusion, Henry, you're gonna write the word of whatever, don't do it yet, because I don't want to see. So for instance, if you opened and you saw the word flower, you could just draw what looks like a flower, and then underneath you would write flower. I'm gonna step away. I don't want to see what you're drawing or labeling. In your head, just keep repeating over and over again whatever this image is. Please hold this so nobody can see, and when you are done, hold it against your heart. That will dry almost immediately. Are we clear? Start drawing, and in your head, say it over and over again. Jordan, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, you are going to keep your eyes closed, but bring your chin up. Good, eyes closed, but chin up. I'm going to touch you on the forehead, and you are going to start to imagine that you can hear his thoughts or see his thoughts. In other words, it could happen to you in a variety of ways. Uh, for some people, it happens like, um, it happens like a movie behind the, uh, the eyelids. For still others, it's like a poster that they're reading something. Uh, for still others, uh, it's like they're tuning into a radio and they're able to access the, the thoughts of somebody else. It's almost like, like a parent's intuition. Sometimes they just get a feeling the way a mother knows uh, the need of a child. He's repeating a word over and over again in his head. I'm just going to touch you on the forehead. I just want you to imagine this as possible. Put your fingers in your ears. Let us know when you think you have an idea of what he is thinking of. Do you have an idea? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Excellent. Can you pick up the pad? Now, you haven't shown anybody. Stand right next to her over here. Don't show anybody. Hold the pad against your head. Here's the thing. Understand what we did here. We asked her to be compliant. I weeded her out. She demonstrated the highest level of compliance and suggestibility. You had no idea what was going to happen. He had no idea what page he was going to pick or what image he was going to create. For the first time, nice and loud, can you sell, say into the microphone whatever it is that you believe he's thinking of? The word boat. Can you? <laughs> Outstanding. Oh, you are wonderful. Thank you very much. Tear that page off, please. You are wonderful. You're going to go back. You're going to be fresh. Revitalized. You will have absolutely no. Can I just ask, how did it feel being able to access somebody else's thought? I'm going to take the paper from you. Henry, thank you very much. I appreciate that. A round of applause for Henry. It was just like really weird. It was like you said, there was like a radio playing in my head. So somehow it sounded so more like words than visual? Yeah, it was just like someone saying, like, I'm thinking of the word boat. Excellent. Give her a round of applause. Oh, this is for you. Jordan, I'm going to leave this for you right over here. We'll let you get that. And I want to thank Henry as well. Thank you very much. I mentioned at the top of the show Theo Anneman. I mentioned this manuscript that ended up going up for auction when he unexpectedly died. And I told you that that manuscript sold to an anonymous bidder. I was that bidder. I have spent 26 years performing, doing much of what you see here, and I have spent all of the last five years perfecting what you are about to see. For this, I'm going to need uh, two young ladies who are very close friends. That's what I'm going to need. Yeah? Okay, leave your phones down. Up here as quick as you can. Thank you very much. We're going to get you. Yep, let him out, let him out. We're going to bring him right up here as quick as we can. 
Thank you. Yeah, take your side right up over here. Anaman talks about the, the most sincere connection that we can make with people. It's uh, people who are friends, people who, it's, I'm gonna ask you to stand right there, I'm gonna bring you on this side over here, please. Thank you very much. What is your first name? Louisa. Louisa, my name is Mark, thank you. I'm gonna bring you right over here and face our audience. And your first name? Catherine. Catherine, Catherine, my name is Mark, thank you very much. Catherine, a half step to the left, and you're gonna face the back over here. They have no idea what's going to happen, right? I didn't ask you to set up anything ahead of time. You have no idea what's going to happen. So how long have you been friends? Um, since kindergarten. Since kindergarten, so about five years. Now, here's the point. We have friends, right, with whom we are close. It's almost like you can finish one another's sentences. You binge watch the same shows. Um, I'm sorry, your first name, you just... Louisa. It? Louisa, Louisa, I want to help you get into the same type of state. You're not going to go into the same state that Jordan went into, but to help you get into a state of comfort, I would like you to think of the name of somebody who is important to you, somebody who is not here. Okay, not by title like mom or aunt, but by a full name. You have somebody's name in mind? This is so cool. I have an envelope. What do you think I have inside the envelope? I have another envelope. Yes. I have something inside this envelope. You're thinking of a name of somebody. I couldn't possibly know the name, is that fair? Pull this out, put it on your palm, don't turn it over yet. Don't turn it over yet. That's okay. How cool would it be on a scale of one to what? If the name that you're thinking of is written on the back of that, um, on, on the back of that card. Pretty cool? Turn that over, show them what name is written on the back of that. Yeah, nothing, that would have been cool though, right? <laughs> Hold that. I want you, you have a name in mind. Yeah. Hold that, like that. Print, just the first name. Nice and large over there, I don't want to see it. But before you write a name, this should be the, the name of somebody who you can visualize. Hair length, eye color, sound of voice. Good? Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Let your arms drop to your sides, and you're gonna look out perhaps either at the exit sign or perhaps the red light that's in the back over there. Just allow yourself to become more and more comfortable. You'll find that your mouth is a little dry, but that's okay, that's gonna change in a minute. Did you write that name? Yeah. Take that. Right inside down. Yeah, I don't want to see it. Good. Eyes against the back. Deep breath in, arms at your sides. Ladies, we're gonna try something very similar to what you saw. Your arms are gonna be at your sides. You're only gonna give the focus on the back of the room. This is the type of connection that people who have spent a lot of time with one another might be able to access. In a moment, but not yet. In a moment, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. And when you do, you're gonna be able to hear the sound of my voice. You're not gonna be in any state of hypnosis or anything like that, but it's merely a state of suggestibility. You've seen what we're able to do here. You see that it's safe and it relies only on your imagination. When your eyes are closed, you're going to imagine this person who gives you this sense of comfort, this sense of warmth. Does that make sense? You're gonna hear me say the words starting now. And after you hear me say the word starting now, your eyes will remain open, but your eyes will close. You're gonna take an inventory of anything that you feel. I may you know, touch you on the forehead or on the top of the head, wherever it is, but just remember where and how many times. But you don't need to say anything until I ask you. Does, is that clear? Ladies, take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale all the way out. We're gonna put them in synchronization. Here's how we do it. Ladies, you send the hands out in front of you just like this. If you guys want to try this in your seat, you can. This is intended just for them. <laughs> Ladies, uh, lock your into like, uh, like into like your fingers, extend only the pointer fingers out. Bend the arms and the elbows so the fingers are pointing straight up. Separate the fingers by about an inch. So you've demonstrated that you can focus at a distance. Now you're going to focus something a little bit closer. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Your legs will always support you. Deep breath in. Exhale all the way out. Deep breath in, hold it one second, exhale all the way out, 
Good. This time when you breathe deeply in, you're going to find that your fingertips are like magnets and they're going to start to draw closer. Deep breath in and watch as your fingertips allow to draw closer and closer. Allow this to happen. Use your imagination. You know what a magnet feels like ever since being a young girl, right? That your fingerprints are getting drawn closer and closer and closer together. Exhale all the way out. Watch them come together in three, two, and one. Good. Excellent. For how many people, did this work? If this happened for you in the audience, give me, give me the round of applause. If it worked for you, clap. So that happened for more than half of you, excellent. Ladies, hands at your sides, eyes back on the distance, deep breath in, your eyes will always stay open. Exhale all the way out. Close your eyes. Let the muscles in your face relax and release, okay? The only sound that's going to matter is the sound of my voice. Take a long, slow, deep breath in, good. And as you exhale, you may find that your head starts to feel a little heavy. That's okay. Your chin can rest a little bit forward. Starting now, you're going to become aware of anything that you feel. Eyes closed, starting. Your eyes will remain open. Your eyes are going to stay closed. Chin up, eyes closed. Please respond to me. If you felt me touch you anywhere on your body, please raise your right hand. With your right hand, please point to where on your body you felt me touch you. Hold up the number of fingers for the number of times that I touched you. More than once. Interesting. Would you open your eyes, please? Yeah, the reason they're reacting in the way that you heard is because I touched her. I'm gonna thank you very much and send you back to your seat. Thank you, you can go this way here. Stand here, look at me, close your eyes, just relax, just relax. The deeper you go, the better you feel, and the better you feel, the deeper you go. All you're gonna do is listen to the sound of my voice. You are absolutely safe. Every other sound gives you permission to drift and dream. Tumbling into your mind, into your imagination, let every muscle in your face relax and your body relax. I'm just going to turn you to face this way here just a little. And the deeper you go, the better you feel. Just release and relax. Good. Now, I asked you a moment ago to think of somebody who would put you into this safe, comfortable state. You haven't told anybody the name of this person, but this is a visual in your mind. You have somebody in your mind. Say nothing out loud, but just keep repeating this person's name over and over again in your mind. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Exhale all the way out. This may have gone wrong, and I think I know why. I'm not sure. Eyes closed, but chin up in a nice, loud voice into the microphone. Can you please tell everybody? You can open your eyes. Tell everybody the name of the person who you are merely thinking of. Lily. Give a round of applause. You guys enjoying the show so far? Good. I have time for one more. So this is going to get almost everybody involved here. You have probably been asked by the administration to have your phones off. No? Oh, good. OK. Gentlemen only, if you have a cell phone, Please take it out now. I'm going to need uh, somebody to help me, sir. If you have a recommendation for somebody who is uh, going to be a, a, a good helper. Uh, right there, front row, blue and purple. Who's that? Oh, thank you. What's your name, sir? DJ, you're not going to need your phone. Put it away. 
Come on up, sir. Come on up. Big round of applause for him. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Tell me your first name again. PJ. PJ. Big round of applause for BJ. PJ, I'm going to put the cap on this, but you're going to need that in a second, okay? Stand right over here. The pad is going to be yours in a minute. BJ, I want you to pick up the magic wand. No. 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 BJ, I want you to wave the magic wand across the crowd right now. Don't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this does absolutely nothing. But it makes for a great photo up. Sir, you're going to put that right down next to you, but you're going to need that in a moment. Good, so it's right at your side. Gentlemen, you have a, uh, a cell phone right now. Please open up your, um, your calculator. Right now, please open up your calculator. Good. Good. Five times five. Eight, five. Right? Let's need your calculator. So you're going to go running down to the audience and you're going to this right. Okay, so I need you to go as quickly as you can. Okay, gentlemen, you have your calculator open. Clear it out. Hold on. Listen to me first, okay? Gentlemen, because you're, you're going to go this way. Gentlemen, hand your phone, your calculator app open. Hand it to the nearest young lady to your left. Go do that now. Hand it to the uh, nearest young lady to your left. BJ, quick, 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 quick as you can. Ladies, listen carefully. Ladies, you are going to punch in any three-digit number now. Quick, any young lady, quick, quick, quick. Punch in any three-digit number. Hand the phone back to the owner. BJ, come here, hand me the phone. Right over here. Gentlemen, hit the multiplication sign times. Gentlemen, hand the phone to the nearest woman to your right. BJ, this way. The other right. Good. Go, go, go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Ladies, put in another three-digit number. Any three-digit number. You're going to think you are being random. You are not. BJ, quick, come back. Hand the phone back to the owner. BJ, BJ don't drop the phone. Okay, hit, gentlemen, hit multiplication sign, hit times again. Gentlemen, hand the phone to the nearest young lady behind you. Improvise. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Put in any three digit number. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Did you do that? BJ, come up here quick. You didn't hurt yourself, did you? No, we didn't. Okay, so you, everybody should have a nice large number. Take the, uh, here, take this. Here's the marker. Write that number as big as you can right across here. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. We have, what do we have, like 300 people in here, so that means 150 phones out. Right now, we have 150 phones that have a different number, or do we? We have the number 302 million, may I, I just want to double check, 327,707. If you have this exact number on your phone, make some noise, how many people got that exact number? You. Nobody, of course not. That would be impossible, but here's the big finish. I got 90 seconds to do this. Hold your phone out like this, gentlemen. Do not turn the screen over. Get the magic wand behind you. Wave it at them. Did you feel anything happen to your phone? Take a look at your phone now. Does your number now read? 302,327,707? Yes? No. Of course not. That would be impossible. But this number that you guys created is a direct result of who you guys are. It would be impossible if we had done this five minutes earlier or five minutes later or with any other crowd. This is not the number that we would have gotten. Is there any possible way we could have known what number this was? No. 
302 million. Stand there, hold it up over your head. 302 million. Three hundred and twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and seven. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is not what I came to show you. This show was a direct result of who you are. You guys earned this privilege for this show. This could only have happened with this group here at Lawrence. Th if I had done this for anybody else, this is not the number we would have gotten. Would you like me to prove that? Yeah. BJ, take this in. Turn it around so they can see the number. Lawrence High School. You can take that with you off stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the privilege of performing for you. You guys were a wonderful audience. If you had a good time, please thank your administrators and everybody who made this possible. My name is Mark Zakaria. Hey, Lawrence High School, keep it going for Mr. Mark Zakaria. What we're going to do right now.